All right, so now we're going to talk about the uh, ways to simplify your plantar plate repair and invariably find a more consistent and predictable way to keep that toe down. So for me, in terms of my personal experience with hammer toes and MTP stability, there's been some success, but there's also some angst. I think any of us who do lesser toe surgery know that it's not perfect, and the results aren't necessarily as predictable as a subtalar fusion. You can do everything right, that toe can look perfect in the operating room, and they can come back sometime later with recurrence of deformity. And so because of that, and because of the frustrations I had early on, I really sort of embarked on a journey to figure out a, a way to more predictably gain static stability of the lesser MTP joint. So from the journey, if we want to call it that, there's a few lessons I've learned. The first is the trick to long-lasting lesser toe correction is you have to address both the coronal and the sagittal instability. I believe these occur together. You can't have one without the other. So you have to address both in order to really get a stable MTP joint. You also have a systematic approach. I'm a huge believer that it, the more you do things the same way every single time, the better and better you get at it. And so I think this, this principle holds true with the lesser MTP joints. Thirdly, the plantar plate matters and it can't be trusted. This was bad tissue before. The majority of these tears are degenerative. So if it was bad tissue before, it's gonna be bad tissue after. You can't trust it, it needs to be augmented. And finally, lesser toes have a mind of their own. And that's, I always, that's, that's like the thing I quote my patients is, I'm gonna leave the operating room with this toe perfect, but occasionally your toe is gonna have a mind of its own and do what it wants to do. And they just have to know that ahead of time. So looking at the static stabilizers of the lesser MTP joints, it's pretty simple. You have a proper and an accessory collateral ligament that gives you your medial and lateral or coronal stability, and then you have the plantar plate that runs under the plantar aspect of the joint and inserts on the base of the proximal phalanx that gives you your sagittal stability. This was a great presentation by David Messias, which, you know, these are really simple sawbones depiction of the lesser MTP joint, but if you look, Whenever a patient comes to your clinic with a dislocated or a crossover toe, it is both a plantar plate problem and a collateral ligament problem. So that's my belief is you can't have a plantar plate tear without having some type of collateral ligament pathology and, and vice versa. The same goes for collateral ligament tear. Some of that plantar plate has to be attenuated. So that's something to keep in mind. So when you really think about this, this umbrella of MTP stability, you have to think both your sagittal alignment provided by the plantar plate and that coronal alignment provided by the collateral ligaments. Today, we're just gonna focus on the plantar plate, but once again, don't forget to also address the collaterals. So when you think about how we treated the plantar plate in the past, we never really treated the problem. We were doing a lot of non-anatomic indirect repairs, hoping that that would work. For example, while osteotomies to decompress a joint, you'd repair the collaterals and sort of hope that that kept the joint in place. Um, flexor to extensor tendon transfers, that type of thing. But, and while these can work, and I've done these, and, and some patients were happy, there's still a really high dissatisfaction rate. You can see this study by Mark Meyerson in 2005, 25% dissatisfaction rate and even higher rate of residual deformity. So obviously that's a problem. So now we've morphed more into really trying to treat this joint, these lesser MTP joints with anatomic repairs. That's really gonna help improve the static stability of the joint and improve your outcomes. We do this through a dorsal approach. You can really predictably and easily access the plantar plate dorsally. It's easier to identify the tear and also allows you to do your simultaneous procedures such as while osteotomies or whatever else you're gonna do. So my indications for a plantar plate repair are a clinical exam that's consistent with a likely tear, but also moderate to severe MTP instability, any sort of malalignment of the MTP joint, dislocated toe, crossover toe, those types of things, or a plantar plate tear confirmed intraoperatively. I do have one contraindication. I think this is important. If they've already got an arthritic MTP joint, I would not recommend doing a plantar plate repair. That's just gonna leave the patient with a more stiff and a more painful joint. I'll kind of go through my surgical approach with this patient that came to me. Really nice lady, pretty significant hallux valgus deformity, chronically dislocated second and third toes, but we'll go through uh, how I corrected her deformity just so you get a sense of uh, how I approach the lesser MTP joint. So whenever I know there's a plantar plate tear, even strongly suspect it, these are the two systems that I have my reps bring to every case. The complete plantar plate repair system that is a great system for your anatomic repair. So that's the system you use to repair the ligament itself. But I also have them bring the forefoot internal brace to every case. First and foremost, because I'm now augmenting every single plantar plate repair with the forefoot internal brace. It was bad tissue before, it's still bad tissue when you repair it. So you start with a dorsal approach. This can be directly over the toe or in the web space. Of course, you do your while osteotomy. Uh, to gain access to the MTP joint, you can use a small joint distractor. You can see that gives you a really nice access to the plantar plate here. 
So what we all hope we see when we get in there is this picture where you've got a nice ligament or at least a nice enough to where you think you can really grab it with some suture to repair the ligament. But in the case of the chronically dislocated toes that have been dislocated for years, you'll get in there and there's no plantar plate left. All you're staring at is FDL. In the past, when I saw this, I was kind of like, ah, oh, crap, now what? You know, you either have to bail out and do the flexor to extensor tendon transfer, or you're just going to decompress a joint with a while osteotomy, repair the collateral, and do a little bit of finger crossing to hope that that joint stays reduced. But you, with that, if you have that internal brace there, now you have a good bailout. If there is still plantar plate remaining, at this point, you're going to release the rest of the plantar plate off the base of the proximal phalanx. This is where the technique diverges a bit. So now you're gonna prep the metatarsal for the internal brace. So I take a second guide wire and I actually advance it at about a 45 degree angle towards the joint. You then pre-drill over that guide wire to give yourself a nice guide tunnel. And you take a looped over labral tape and you're gonna pass that from plantar to dorsal up through your metatarsal guide tunnel. So I'll use a micro suture lasso to do that. Notice on that picture on the far left, you have to get deep to that uh, plantar plate so that you don't bind up your anatomic plantar plate repair. And you can see in the central picture here that what that looks like with that looped over portion having been passed from plantar to dorsal through the metatarsal. Now, if you do still have plantar plate tissue remaining and you're gonna do an anatomic plantar plate repair, this is the step where you're now gonna pass a suture tape through the plantar plate. Arthrex gives a lot of options to be able to do this. Uh, my go-to is the, the Scorpion Suture Passer. This makes it really easy to put a couple sutures through the plantar plate. If you have a tighter space, for example, if you haven't done a while osteotomy, the Viper also helps you really pass the suture and lets you get in to a little bit more of a tighter space. Also, sometimes I get a little lazy and I just grab a free needle, use a fiber link stitch, and I really like this luggage tag stitch where you can really cinch down nicely on that plantar plate if you've got good tissue. Then you next go to the proximal phalanx, take a guide wire, and just like you had in the metatarsal, you're gonna advance this obliquely, 45 degree angle through the proximal phalanx. You pre-drill over that, and that gives you a nice guide tunnel in the proximal phalanx. You then take whatever sutures you have, whether that be your internal brace or your anatomic plantar plate sutures, and you're gonna pass those from plantar to dorsal up through the proximal phalanx. So I always get asked two questions here. It's number one, wait, there's not a second guide tunnel. And the answer is no. You know, with the, with the old way that we were doing this, we'd put two tunnels in the proximal phalanx. Now you're just doing one tunnel, tunnel centrally in the base of the proximal phalanx. It works, but you have to make sure that's, that tunnel is truly center center so you don't get your toe, spin your toe, you know, one way or the other. The second question I get asked is how do you fit all this, that suture through such a small tunnel between both the anatomic repair and the internal brace? And the answer is you just do. <laughs> it fits. It's tight, but it fits. So once you've done that, you can see in that central picture what that looks like with the looped over internal brace through the metatarsal, the rest of your sutures out that single guide tunnel in the proximal phalanx. If you haven't already fixated your while osteotomy, do that at this point. I usually use one or two snap off screws. So here's where this procedure, to me, you know, maybe I get, I'm kind of a dork, so this stuff excites me. But this is where this procedure gets really cool is now you can set the resting tension of your toe but the motion limits of the toe separately. So in the past, when we were doing just an anatomic plantar plate repair, we were all taught to tension this in plantar flexion so that you really, you know, because some of this was gonna maybe stretch out and you don't want that repair to fail. But the problem with that is if they didn't stretch out, patients had really stiff MTP joints and weren't happy. Now with augmenting this with the internal brace, you don't have to do that anymore. So you can actually set that ligament, that anatomic repair back where it should be at an anatomic resting tension because you've got the internal brace to back you up. So in terms of setting your resting tension for your anatomic repair, that's gonna be through your proximal phalanx fixation. And then setting the max limits of motion, in, in other words, how much dorsiflexion you want that toe to have, that's gonna be your internal brace and you set that through your metatarsal fixation. So with your, your setting your resting tension of your anatomic repair, what I do is I just hold the toe in neutral. That's where it wants to sit. That's where that plantar plate's supposed to be. So I just hold the toe in neutral with one hand. I pull max tension on those sutures from the anatomic plantar plate repair with the other and have my assistant advance a three by eight biotinides to screw into the proximal phalanx. So at that point, your anatomic repair is done. You don't even worry about the internal brace at this point. You worry about your anatomic repair, that's done. So then I love that, I, I just love this part of the procedure. Every time I do it, I get excited because it's, it's fun to be able to really say, I, I get to pick how much this toe moves. And so you can see on that far left-hand picture, I hold the toe with one hand and that I just decide, how, do I want this toe to have zero degrees of dorsiflexion, 10, 20, whatever you want. Where do you want that internal brace to become taut? That's where you hold the toe. 
Then with my other hand, you can see I've looped my th fingers through that internal brace, and I basically water ski on that suture to really pull it taut. And then you just hold it and have your assistant put the three by eight biotine adhesive screw in the metatarsal. And at that point, you cut the sutures and admire your sagittal plane stability. This is a stable toe, and it stays, which is really cool. I mean, I haven't, knock on wood, I haven't had a failure yet. I'm sure my time's coming, that we all do. But, but adding this internal brace has made a big difference. And so you can see this lady, she had a great correction. Fused her first MTP joint using the Max Force plate. If you guys haven't used this plate yet, I strongly encourage you to do so in the lab. It's got a geared mechanism that allows you to really get some good extra compression across the MTP joint. So it's pretty cool. Fixed her hammer toes, did wild osteotomies of her metatarsals, and you can see clinically her foot looked much better as well. So in terms of the post-op protocol, I mean, the biggest point to hammer home is you have to get these patients moving early and often. With that internal brace in place, I can get that MTP joint moving right away. So I tell them, go home, give yourself a day to sort of let the pain and the swelling go down, and then I have them come out of their post-op shoe and start actively trying to move that toe immediately. And I don't worry about that repair stretching out because the internal brace has already set their max limits of motion. So in summary, you have to address all planes of deformity when you have some type of, of deformity through the lesser toes. Really make sure not only to address the sagittal stability, but also your coronal stability. Come up with a systematic approach. Take these, they're difficult problems. They're just a toe, but it's tough. It's a tough surgery. So give yourself a systematic approach so you basically streamline it for yourself every single time. And finally, I can't emphasize this enough, don't trust the plantar plate. It was bad tissue before. It's still going to be bad tissue after. Augment your repair with the internal brace. Thank you.